Welcome again to another Robots episode. In this video, we will talk about the new Fano collaborative robot, the CRX. This robot uses as a teach pendant a Samsung Galaxy Active Tab, which is an Android tablet, and it connects to a remote desktop through an app. To create a program in this system, it's very similar to the traditional Fanox. You have to go into the menu, select program, and then click on create. Now, this interface is very different from before. As you can see, these are programming blocks. All you need to do is drag and drop them on the history bar on the top. If you want to move the robot, you will have to press robot operation on the bottom. In this menu, you will be able to move the robot hand guiding it or jogging every single axis. Usually in traditional robots, you will need to enable the teach pendant by putting it in manual mode T1. Here, you will need to enable touch on the top right and then simply press the dead man switch button on the back and uh, select the joint that you want to move. The tablet will vibrate when you're moving the joints. Also, in this programming menu, as the modern industrial robots, you have a 3D view. But this one, in particular, it shows you the angles that the joints can move, which is pretty useful. Bear in mind that we are pre-recording the screen and the background is not synchronized with the screen recording. But going back into robot operation, the beauty of these collaborative robots is the free hand glide or free hand guided uh, movement. And you can do that by just simply selecting free and then uh, pressing the dead man switch. So once you press the dead man switch, the robot will be in free drive. So you can move it wherever you want. So now let's do a example programming. In this case, we'll make a label, a few movements and a jump. As you can see, uh, the technician here put the jump first and then the movements, joint movements. And to create the points, he will simply use the hand guide movement. To create a basic program, as you can see, it's very simple. All you need to do is just uh, drag and drop the point or the instruction set that you want, and then just move the robot into the position. Here you can see that the movement and instruction sets are all sorted out in different tabs. So right now we are in all tab and nothing is filtered. Then you can go into motion and you have like linear movements, joint movements and other type of movements. If you go into control, uh, you will have like uh, macros uh, call into another subroutine, if statements or like jump and label. And in inputs and outputs, you will find the registers and comments and in other, you will find some predefined basic blocks with a pick and place, for example, or palletizing modes. So like I was saying before, it's very easy to create a basic program. All you need to do is drag and drop. And if you have any mistake in the programming, you don't need to cut and paste. You simply need to just drag and drop on the history bar. So let me show you right now, because we have the jump instruction first, and then we put the label at the back. So now the technician realizes that it's wrong and it puts it on the front and it changed the jump to the back. Perfect. Now we've finished the program. How do you run the program? So that's easy also. Just remember to disable the teach pendant. That's the top right corner. You will need to click on it and see that the touch is disabled. Now simply press run and then select yes. Congratulations. You've created the first program on the CRX. However, we have noticed that the robot sometimes doesn't reach the points. It might be some configuration problem or simply because the robot is uh, reaching some forced angles or maybe some singularity points. So here we have the final program and we've synchronized it with the recording of the screen. So let's recap a bit. To create a program, you need to enable the teach pendant, the icon on the top right, has to be the tablet with a hand icon, and then select the program and create program. To run the program, you will need to uh, disable the tablet like it's now, and then reset the errors and press run. You can change the speed of your program with the override on the bottom slider. As you can see right now it's 100% and now moving quite faster. Let's review another interesting function, path teach function. As the name suggests, you can teach the robot a path and it will follow this movement. So let's create another program and go into the path teacher block function. 
Now we drag this and drop it. Remember to change the teach pendant into manual mode. And once you drop it, it will take you to another menu. Here you will be able to configure the speed and also the fine movements. You can do a more continuous movement or a more uh, choppy movement. If you click next, you will be able to start the path. As you can see, it has a maximum recording length. And to move the robot, you will simply need to press uh, the deadman switch and move the robot. Once it reaches the maximum or you click end, it will end the recording. So let's do the maximum length. And now that uh, we have the movement, we can disable the teach pendant and test the program. As you can see, it's also a very easy movement instruction. And it's very interesting for all the collaborative robots to be able to do this. Um, I know about universal robots, uh, it can do it with a uh, on-robot uh, force sensor, but not by default. This is probably not the most precise movement type, but it's very useful to do in-between movements to from one place to another and then do the precise movement. Or maybe if you have a milling or welding machine that has a touch probe or a touch sensor that it can offset and compensate these uh, imperfections. So last but not least, let's go through the menus and see what has changed from the previous systems before. So if you click on the bottom right, you will get on the interface the previous layout of the teach pendant. This is useful because on the DCS, for example, when you need to input numbers, you cannot use the tablet mode. There is no keyboard. Most of the menus in this system are similar to the previous ones. You will be able to shuffle through all of the menus that you had before. And also you will have uh, additional menus that are for collaborative robot. For example, this one in the DCS. If you want to change the external force or the limits for the axes, you will have to input here. In the previous system, if you remember, you have to do a key combination, which is a shift and reset and then do other things. In this touchpad, all you need to do is uh, double click on the button and the shift will be already pressed. Now let's apply this configuration for this collaborative robot and you will see that we will need to reboot the system. Uh, all it needs to do is uh, reboot the controller, but the teach pendant is still on. So you will see the Android menu and now it's back into the app it's trying to reconnect. And once the controller boots up, it will connect into the IP. Now we are back into the remote desktop and we will see that the remote IP pendant has logged in. That's about it with a collaborative robot. Now you have an initial setup menu that, and then some collaborative robot setup, some tool setup and frame setup. There is also a wizard menu for the robot speed that is allowed for a collaborative robot. So if you select that, it's going near to the head or the technician or operator will work with the robot uh, near the head, for example, it will limit the speed. Here is the NFactor setup. You can disable the inputs and outputs, the alarm status, the inputs and outputs. It's a bit different from the interface before, but uh, if you open the menu on the bottom right, as I showed you before in the DCS, it will be the same menu as before. So in reality, it hasn't changed much. The menus are pretty much the same. It's just the interface has changed. So we have a revamp on the UI, but uh, more or less, it's a good view. I have to say that when we have been programming the robot, um, the system hasn't been frozen. But when you're uh, teaching points, it does freeze from time to time. The good thing about this system is that you can update it uh, and you can get the APK from the official website once they approve your account, which we still haven't gotten approved. And it's been at least one month. Hopefully these issues have been corrected in the new updates. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, as always, like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts, suggestions or questions, please leave a comment below and see you in the next video.